my name's Nicole and I was born with a limb difference. Now over the years one of the things I struggled with the most was the unwanted attention that you get when you have a visible difference. So whether it's someone who's seeing a limb difference for the first time and they're staring or they're asking questions which I don't quite know how to deal with. There's just there's a lot to navigate when you're growing up with a limb difference. So our incredible limb buddy Amy, she came up with the idea of creating this guide to deal with unwanted attention. So stick around while we talk about it and I will tag the link below as well. So enjoy. <laughs> Amy, I, like, I read through one of the blogs that you've created. It's it's just awesome. What made you want to look into that topic? When Hero was born, we sort of knew before she was born that she was going to have a difference. And I was very new to any sort of difference, disability, anything like that. And I, it, I did find it a bit overwhelming trying to work out what to do. Like when she was born everything was lovely and then like I'd start going to baby groups and things and I was just a bit I use the word in my blog like hyper vigilant um where you're just you're feeling a bit insecure yourself so you're a bit uh looking around to see if anyone was looking at her or judging or feeling a bit paranoid and I like that I had a number of sort of experiences where somebody was looking or somebody asked or somebody said something and I just walked away afterwards and thought I don't think I handled that right and I just didn't know what to do and what's what's the right way to react to that and I I know on some of the the groups I'm in on social media it's a question that comes up I think more than any other is uh, somebody well, how do I react how should I react how should I help my child and and so that's where I sort of wanted to start looking into these blog posts and speak to somebody who's an expert in this field which is not me, um, and yeah, get some advice that was perhaps, because if there was just a few top tips that you can remember and sort of just reel them off, I feel, you know, really helps you or helped me to feel more in control of those situations that could be quite scary. And there's so many layers to you, even that like you mentioned there with um, going to a baby group for the first time, like in itself as a new mum, because Hero's your eldest, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, first child. <laughs> Yeah, so that's it's quite intense anyway to kind of come out of that baby bubble and kind of step into this group of strangers yeah um and all the other things that come with a newborn or a young child and being out in public and then <laughs> like any unwanted attention or questions yeah that you've got to navigate as well that was it absolutely it was just all a bit overwhelming and there is that real i i, I felt wrongly or rightly that there's a right way to do things in terms of reacting to people I just didn't know what they were <laughs> and and I think it's it's become more of a thing for me lately because Hero's older now she's five I'm now just so painfully aware that she's aware of what I'm saying and what I'm doing so it's now become me trying to model for her so if I felt I reacted wrong when she was a baby it didn't matter because she didn't see anything whereas now I'm like oh I'm modeling for this this small human who needs to sort of yeah see how to handle these things herself and it uh, yeah just wanted, <laughs> wanted to speak to the experts to see if we could get it as spot on as possible or even just to be told it's okay however you react is fine and that, and that was that was one of the surprising things that came out of the research for this blog post was that however you react is it's okay you know, it was very much put yourself and your child at the centre of this. And if you're having a bad day and it's not a brilliant response, it's OK. It's OK. And it was actually really, really nice to sort of talk it through with the experts with her and just go, oh. So I look back at all those times where I think maybe I messed up or and to just be told, that's fine. I, I, on reading it, I think that was one of the main takeaways I got. It was kind of nice just to be held and told that, your reaction is your reaction and it's your body yeah. and it's your life and you don't have to kind of perform for anybody if it's hard that day then it's hard and yeah. you can remove yourself and next time um maybe it'll go differently yeah absolutely and obviously but much more pertinent for you as well because 
you are the adult in the situation and have the difference whereas obviously for me the difference is removed and and I'm trying to sort of deal with it for hero but um did anything come out of it for you that you found helpful then as an adult with a visible difference I think for me because like you said like we're kind of on different sides of the situation yeah. but it's quite interesting when we've chatted and that's why I wanted to have like the chat on video we've we've spoken and there's a lot of similarities to how we feel yeah. and our experiences even though kind of I'm the the person with the limb difference and you're the parent um and yeah I think for me the having the set response I've I've never yeah. thought about that in all my all my years of kind of the conversations around my arm or the looks and the stares I've never thought to have a set response yeah um, yeah. like um remind me what it is explain reassure and then divert which I really like so I think I, I told you once before Hero I think has been doing this but unconsciously I didn't realize that's what we were doing and she didn't realize that's what she was doing but I um I asked her the other day how she felt when a child in the soft play had been just 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 looking just curious nothing mean nothing anything just attention and I said oh how how was that you know how did you find that and she just said oh it's fine isn't it mummy I just said to her this is my baby hand I was born this way uh, but it's really cool and I can do all the stuff should we go play <laughs> and that was her sort of wrote and I was just like hmm wow I have a I have a lot of respect for that from my five-year-old <laughs> and and she just said it like it wasn't troubling or difficult and it was that was just explain it I was born this way reassure her but it's cool I'm fine everything's okay and then divert let's go let's go play and it and it yeah it seemed to work really well um and it was yeah. one of those moments where it it floored me a bit because this these these situations I think I always found quite difficult to deal with since having her and it's fascinating watching her because she just shows me that they're not that difficult. <laughs> like she's she's just fine. And she was like, yeah, but this is what I say and it's dealt with. She's like, why would this even be a problem? <laughs> and that may change when she gets older. But for now, she was just so, yeah, yeah, it's cool. What I say, it's fine. Well, it's awesome. Like, I know her name's Hero, but she's literally my hero in terms of how she approaches that because it's just like so factual and like let's get on with yeah get on with our day again. Not yeah, she's like this is not a thing, and it, it is fascinating for me to watch her because I think perhaps I'm a more insecure person than she is. <laughs> so she often puts me right on a lot of things, and for example, like I was watching her at gymnastic, and then there was this little girl who was staring at her hand and kind of trying to move around her to look and stare. And she just sort of folded her arms and turned slightly away from this kid and carried on like nothing had happened. And again, I'm there getting all... <laughs> and it was just a case of, oh, she's okay with this. She's okay. And, you know, I, we've never... I mean, we've spoken about how you felt about being stared at a bit as an adult. I want, do you have any memories of those sorts of experiences? No. It's, I don't have any kind of standout experiences. I think, for me, it's just always been there like yeah when I was when I was young it was just kind of a bit annoying I guess and then when I got older um I used to hide a lot so I used to always have like for example I've got my my sleeve rolled up now but I would always make sure that I had a jacket or something on and I'd always make sure that my sleeve was down and I'd always tuck my arm like into my body as I like moved around as like a teenager. Do you know um, why that was? Was that because you just didn't want the attention or because you felt bad or negative about having the difference? Do you know what what was your trigger for hiding? Yeah, I don't I think a bit of both. I think as a teen you kind of want to blend. Yeah. <laughs> you I think you're I, I guess yeah. Some people are really confident and they want to stand out, but I just wanted to blend in yeah, yeah, yeah. and have a bit of a quiet life in terms of kind of out kind of socially. I just wanted to be like my friends, like my yeah. peers. Um, so, yeah, I didn't want the stairs, I guess, which would then make me stand out from my friends if yeah. I was out. So it took a lot of like retraining to yeah. be confident in seeing people stare and knowing it's okay, which is why I love kind of when you get to the self-care part of the blog, um, when you're saying that you do the same, 
to do that to yourself yeah yeah which, yeah again that's so good so to just be like it's okay yes I know I know that like I'm different and people are curious like I think for me what I learned um I guess maybe when I got to my late teens was just to kind of have a bit of tunnel vision like I said to you before I just yeah, kind of like blinkers on I didn't used to look around so I just okay. used to be focused on where I'm going what I'm doing and because I used to look for the stairs and then I stopped some days that changes and some days I feel like more stared at I guess because maybe yeah. I'm looking for it yeah yeah but I don't know yeah and that was one um, of my fa- not my favorite things obviously but one of the most interesting that really stuck with me um that this lady said to me was kind of coming back to this hyper vigilance thing and I think now I look back to when Hero was a baby I think maybe at least 75 percent possibly 90 percent of experiences where I felt I was being stared at I had looked for and definitely now Hero's older and she's just you know she she has you know confidence problems here and there but she's so she seems to have such a good sense of self-worth that I'm I'm much less hyper vigilant because I've just got to the point that she's fine if she's not being hyper vigilant I really shouldn't be <laughs> and and I know that that's my ro- I know that it's normal as a parent because you want to you want to foresee their whole world and, and control it and protect them from everything and it's she's been teaching me to kind of stop looking for everything whereas when I was when she was little I was super 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 hypersensitive about everything and um there was this occasion where it just, it, it, we kind of laugh about it now but my husband still goes a bit white when we mention it where we were on um HMS Victory in Portsmouth and walking around on the deck of the ship and Hero had just started walking so I was just like obsessed with her and just watching everything she did and you know they're so cute and, la, 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 la. and um um this kid behind me went oh my god where's your arm and I just sort of like you know when you, you swell up like the whole or like a bear and I I turned ready to grab this person and then like literally hurl them I was like ah oh, how dare you ruin our blah, 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 blah. and I remember that Ben was stood behind the person who spoke um my husband and he was just going <gasps> no because he could see my face turning around to kill this man and um and it's his little boy because lord nelson actually the admiral of the flagship didn't have an arm he lost it in an accident (laughs) so the little boy was just pretending to be lord nelson (laughs) but because i was so hypersensitive i assumed he was talking about hero and i just remember ben's face of oh my goodness she's gonna kill it she is going to kill this poor man and his son who were just having a lovely day out learning about some history and that was just such a vivid um demonstration of hyper vigilance to me of going oh okay so I I was looking for that this has nothing to do with us no one's even noticed or paid any attention to her um to her difference but that was my first real experience of I'm looking for these problems and yeah I need to try and step back but you need to get into a good emotional place to be able to be less hyper vigilant I think you have to process yeah. it and accept it more and come to terms with the difference it's not that it's a negative thing but it was just a shock and it was a difference and it's that the minute I've come to terms with it and I needed to see that she was okay do you think that kind of the response of anger that sometimes I I personally sometimes just get to a point where I'm I'm annoyed and yeah. I get a bit angry when people are very yeah. rude. I get, I, I'm just done. And my last response is to be angry. Yeah. Do you think that they kind of feed into each other? Like if you're hyper vigilant, you're more likely to yeah. respond that way. That seemed to be what um, our expert was saying to me was that is this kind of vicious cycle. And that if, which is not to criticize, if you do get angry, I've been angry. <laughs> Like, I, you know, I, I get that sense of anger. And I think she was very understanding about it as well. But it is that sense of if you get really angry this time, your tolerance is lower next time. So next time it happens again, the implication was that you'll be quicker to go to anger. And I assume as your tolerance gets lower, 
your hyper vigilance probably gets higher because you are there for well it's that sense of threat isn't it if you're if you're angry you feel more threatened and then the knock-on effect is going to be that increased sense of panic and yeah expecting things to come your way also you like when i spoke to the expert about the kind of the tall tail side of it so mm. a shark bit my arm off kind of those kind of yeah. responses when i guess to educate because I've only just kind of over the last maybe five years really understood that it's not my responsibility to educate someone mm. on why my body is my body and yeah. and how you navigate it because I'm, I'm a people pleaser so yeah. I, I think I would always answer those questions feeling I have to yeah. um, and obviously each each opportunity to educate it's great to kind of grab hold of but then you're not always feeling it yeah. and I remember when I was a bit younger like I <laughs> I would want to say to people like oh my like a shark bit it off mm-hmm. or um was like, I don't know, when I was there at the zoo it was terrible <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah like I think the only time I ever told kind of a tall tale was in the playground and this boy came up to me and he was probably six seven ish and he just would not stop following me around he'd notice my arm just kept following me following me following, bugging me just asking me questions asking me questions and obviously i wasn't up for it that day to like yeah, talk about it. I to play chase or i don't know what i was doing but he was just always there and he was always like, pointing and asking and um so in the end, I, yeah, I just turned around and I was like, oh, my mum, my mum trapped my arm in the washing machine. I don't even know where it came from. It was just done. And instead of anger, that's where I went. <laughs> and he just like looked at me. I like that, the law like, oh. and anger are clearly quite closely linked to you. <laughs> now more so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now that I'm a mum. Well, how yeah. did, you oh, no. did it work? I don't know where it came from. <laughs> did it work though? Did the kid go away? Yeah. I didn't see him ever again. So, He's answered your question. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to advocate for um, <laughs> yeah, like, making up random stories. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> and it's what it, I found it quite interesting that she was um, our expert was kind of going, yeah, don't maybe don't encourage them to do that because that has definitely been my leaning from time to time has been like what amazing stories could we come up with so let's just say you know a crocodile gnawed it off in australia or something like that and that's very much hero's sense of humor like she she finds that really funny so i do have to be quite careful to not necessarily encourage that sort of behavior and, and like i said you know she uses her explain reassure divert thing she's she's never actually said it to somebody but it's very much her her humour, and she's very into dinosaurs, so it's obviously a T-Rex every time, which I think is fine to say because it's obviously not true. Like you could tell from that that that's uh, not yeah. what happened. <laughs> what with them being very abstract. Yeah, and it, yeah, that that one was interesting, and and the sense of children. But I, I think it must just give you a sense of ownership, like you were saying that time where that boy wouldn't leave you alone wouldn't stop bugging you and and in fairness his parents should have been there and dealt with that situation (laughs) or a teacher I don't know what playground it was but an adult should have in my opinion been aware of that going on um Mm -hmm. and intervened but I think I could totally get that sense of do you know what you are now you have crossed over from a child being curious to a child who is now being really rude and there needs to be something it's like our experts said about you know shut don't be afraid to call out the rudeness and that's what's going to be interesting i think to strike a balance for myself and perhaps for you i don't know but the don't get angry but it's okay to call out the rudeness so it's a way of going okay so how can i kind of marry those two up and go okay small child you're actually being quite rude now (laughs) but i'm not angry (laughs) It's okay. So I think I can right. imagine that would be a very narrow line to walk. Um, what I liked about talking to our expert was having tools and equipment to use when you're in the right frame of mind, but that sense of acceptance for the situations when you're not in the right frame of mind <laughs> and it doesn't, you know, go as smoothly as you feel it 
perhaps could have done. And that was a really, just a really nice, powerful message that here are some tools so you don't feel at sea, but it's mm. okay if it all goes a bit pitong, that's okay. Because yeah. we're human. And... Definitely. Yeah, I think as well, the um, the Paddington stare, that really helped me. <laughs> yeah. Because, well, for one, to give it a name, because that's yeah. kind of been my go-to response when I'm not in conversation with somebody and I walk past and you've got someone literally like making a very obvious effort yeah. to stare at your difference like the only way I, I think I feel like it was almost I've got a choice of I'll approach them and be angry yeah. <laughs> or yeah. I can just make really obvious eye contact with them until they realize that I'm seeing what they're doing yeah and then they stop and it's, it's almost, it, it holds it work? Is it effective then for you to find that helps? Because I always think that <laughs> if people are called out for their behavior, it, it's like being on the internet. They almost feel like they're not being noticed staring. So perhaps you mm -hmm. looking back at them highlights that behavior for them. And... Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, just showing them that you see them doing what they're doing. It's just enough, actually. Like yeah. when you're not, in conversation or in a mood to yeah. approach them and say yes I'm different but like yeah. it's all good um and yeah like it just it seems to stop it quite quickly yeah. because no one I don't, I don't know I guess everyone knows that that's not the best way to deal yeah. with seeing someone with a difference to really <laughs> yeah. yeah like children would never do it to a child yeah. um I think like in terms of self-awareness and things that's not yeah. quite there yet so I think this is just it's really powerful when when you first like sent it over to me before like we shared it it I personally know that I'll be pulling on it a lot so I'm yeah. so grateful for you kind of reaching out to the expert and really exploring this topic yeah that's cool and then like the changing faces website as well it's just incredible the amount of stuff on there and it's not it's 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 relevant and valid for anybody uh, looking at the questions that we're seeing from parents how do i react how do i respond how do i help my child um and i just thought there's got to be an easy answer to this we can't all be wrong and if all these people are still asking even in this world of social media I just wanted mm. yeah I wanted something that was available and I'm a big lover of a toolkit I like to feel that I've got an easy toolkit <laughs> something simple that I can just whip out and and yeah our experts sort of giving us that that tool from changing faces of the explain reassure divert just it's it's brilliant